Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Sunday evening, July 4th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for your location. Well, here's Tropical Storm Elsa currently passing between the Cayman Islands and Cuba, moving toward the west-northwest, eventually expected to cross Cuba, move into the southeast Gulf of Mexico, and then on into Florida, somewhere along the central western coast of the peninsula over the next couple of days. This has been a struggling storm for the last day or two as we've been talking about, and this is mostly due to a little bit of wind shear resulting from the fact that the steering flow in the low levels and the mid levels is trying to push Elsa in two different directions. We have a surge of southwest southeasterly flow hitting the storm from the right-hand side, and this is constantly trying to push the surface center up to the north across Cuba, but the mid-level flow is toward the west, and the mid-level center keeps trying to go that direction. So with these two being pushed in different directions, they're constantly getting disjointed from each other where the surface center kind of sticks out toward the west where the mid-level center is and they end up in different spots. And that's been happening in cycles over the last day or so as the surface center races out ahead, then it dies, and then the mid-level center reforms a new one back toward the east. And that's been happening a few times over the last 24 hours. This is the Cuban radar showing the current state of the vortex, and we're currently in one of the upward pulses in strength, where the mid-level center is quite well defined. We can see it on radar, kind of an ominous ring of thunderstorms that look kind of like an eye wall. I don't think it's really an eye wall here. The storm is weaker than it appears on this radar structure, but there is good rotation here, and you can see it trying to move off toward the west on this loop. Now we do happen to have a recon plane in there to assess the structure and it shows that where that rotation is on radar there is a surface circulation there as well. We can see strong wind on the northeast side of it and then wrapping back around out of the west here and so we do have a closed center there so they are actually currently stacked with max winds of about 60 to 65 miles per hour at the surface on the eastern side of that. Now the problem for the storm is that the vortex that's currently here is a little bit fragile. We lose the northwesterly winds as soon as we get down here to the Cayman Islands. In fact, the wind at this location has been out of the southeast for most of the last few hours. And I can show you here, one of the latest reports had an east-southeast wind and our circulation is here. So we go from a closed circulation to easterly and northeasterly winds just to the south in quite a hurry. So this is a small, fragile vortex that Elsa currently has. The wave envelope that's kind of outlined in here is constantly trying to race away to the northwest of where the mid-level center is, which is continuously lagging behind. So again, it's really a question of, can this structure that we're seeing hold together prior to this moving into the Cuban coastline? So at the moment, the storm is probably strengthening slightly over the last few hours, but will that last given that it's constantly being torn in different directions by the flow? We can see on the GFS model kind of how this is working. This is the low level flow analysis for about 8 p.m. Eastern time. And this is showing where Elsa is here. And you can kind of see what we were talking about where the low level wave pocket is kind of in here. And the center, the mid-level center, and then the new low-level center of ELSA is kind of near the northeastern edge of that wave pocket. Now, if it was a healthy system, it would probably be more tucked into the center of the wave pocket, and all of this would be stacked together really well. But instead, it's kind of offset toward the east. And as a result, this strong surge of trade wind flow out of the southeast is constantly trying to push the surface center off toward the northwest, away from the rest of the vortex. And so this is constantly trying to tear ELSA apart and that will continue for another 24 hours or so as this crosses Cuba. So we're likely to see further pulses of strengthening and then weakening as the storm gets torn apart and then restacks and then gets torn apart again, likely to continue for the next little while. In addition, we're also getting this to cross Cuba. And so that land will disrupt Elsa's strength as it crosses the island, which has some tall mountains. And so by the time it gets over to the other side, sometime on Monday afternoon or evening, it'll get into the Florida Straits likely as a weak to moderate tropical storm, not really expecting something strong to show up here once it crosses the island. Now at this point going forward, this could have some water time as it moves up toward the central Florida coastline. We're not really seeing any indications that this is going to move directly into say the southern tip of the Florida Peninsula or Miami or anything like that. It's going to stay toward the west and move up toward kind of the Tampa Bay area, the Big Bend of Florida. That gives it some time over water and we could see a, a chance for reorganization and some slight restrengthening of ELSA during that transit 
over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. If we look at the upper level flow, we'll see that it's going to run into a pattern where there's a little bit of southwesterly flow aloft here. There's some troughing over the southeastern US, and that's generating some southwesterly wind shear that will be about 15 to 20 knots, so a moderate level. That's not wildly favorable for ELSA, but it is not strong enough to prohibit re-strengthening. So we are likely to see at least an attempt at gaining some intensity again during this part of the track over water. And we can see on the GFS that indeed the vortex does get a little bit stronger here as it nears the west coast of Florida. Nailing down the exact landfall point here is quite difficult because if the storm is moving parallel to the Florida coastline, very small shifts to the left or the right could make a big difference in exactly where the center crosses the coast. If it moves slightly to the right, suddenly it's moving into kind of the Fort Myers area. If it moves slightly to the left, suddenly it's moving into Stein Hatchie. So it's very hard to pin this down, but it's important not to focus too much on that because we're not dealing with, we're not going to have a really strong hurricane here with a really small eye wall. Instead, we're gonna have this kind of strong spread out wind field on the eastern side where strong wind and heavy rains will be mostly confined east of the center and are likely to impact most of the Florida Peninsula regardless of exactly where the center crosses the coastline. So in this case, exactly where the center goes not quite as relevant as the fact that it's going to be spreading its eastern side over most of the Florida Peninsula anyway. Now as this moves up and inland on the GFS, this kind of moves into Georgia and just weakens here. Whoops, sorry about that. Kind of weakens here over Georgia and then the storm is just weakens and the wind field dissipates and it becomes nothing but a rain event up in southeastern US and the Appalachians. But on the European model, it's worth noting that it, it shows the potential for a track that may actually come back out over the water for a short time and actually ends up in the Myrtle Beach area by Thursday morning as actually a slightly stronger storm than it was when it hit Florida. And that's because again, subtleties in the track, this could end up just inland, in which case it'll keep weakening, or it could end up over water for even one more stretch of time after it crosses Florida. And we could see one additional period of re-strengthening prior to moving up into the Carolinas. And during this time, again, wind shear will be there, but this flow here is not so strong that it would prevent re-strengthening if it moves back out over water. So that's just something to keep in mind here. The official forecast does bring this inland and keeps it just inland over the Carolinas, but just a slight shift over water could mean that we have to deal with tropical storm watches getting issued here. We're not quite there yet. It's still three to four days out. We're talking about late Wednesday and into Thursday up here in this stretch of coastline. But just keep that in mind. It's in the range of possibilities that this is out over water and is a little bit stronger once it gets up into this area. This is expected to be mostly a water event, not expecting a huge wind event here, but we are going to get tropical storm warnings and watches spreading northward as we go forward in time into Florida, currently extending up toward Tampa Bay, but we will get them farther north as we start to get closer to the landfall time, which is currently expected to be late Tuesday or early Wednesday. And at this point, you know, tropical storm force winds still going to potentially cause power outages and capable of pushing down trees. But we are going to be focusing mostly on the flash flooding potential, which is elevated across most of the Florida Peninsula as the east side of the storm will be quite wet. And then this will spread up toward the northeast, toward Georgia and the Carolinas as well. Not there yet because this is a three day forecast and it could be more than three days out before this gets up here. So eventually this map will turn green and yellow up into the rest of the southeastern US as well. So stay tuned to your local weather office for details on impacts to your area. You can go to weather.gov to get your local forecast and hurricanes.gov to get the latest updates from the National Hurricane Center as we continue to track Elsa, still south of Cuba. Could get some slight restrengthening here over the next uh, several hours as it moves toward the Cuban coastline. Tropical storm warnings are out for all of this region heavy rains and potential for flooding continuing. Then we'll likely weaken a little bit and pop out over here and then possibly re-strengthen one more time before moving into Florida in a couple of days. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.